Hello, my name is Whiteout. So today I'm gonna be attempting to make my own full rubber cat suit. Now I say attempt because I've never made a cat suit before. I've always just bought them, but I've always thought it'd be fantastic to learn how to do it my own. It would save me a ton of money and I could come up with some fantastic designs in the future. So there's only one way to find out and that is with making my own. Let's get to it. First, I wanted to make an accurate pattern. So I attempted to unglue the seams on my old suit with some paint thinner and a razor blade. While I've been successful with this in the past with cheaper Chinese suits, the much higher quality skin tight rubber suit was glued very well. After an hour of trying this method, I was completely unsuccessful with being able to separate anything. So more drastic measures needed to be taken. I decided that cutting the suit along the seams would be the best way to create my pattern. However, because of this, I would need to take into account another 3 eighths of an inch on the side I cut. This is so I have some overlap when gluing the seam together. I wanted to use the rotary cutter most of the time because the scissors create a really jagged cut. However, in cases where the rubber was overlapping, the scissors were necessary. Thankfully, the zippers were much easier to pull off, although I did need to be careful not to rip any of the rubber in the process. With the suit fully pieced out, it's time to make a pattern for the new suit. I'll be making this pattern from heavyweight 160 pound drawing paper. Here's what I purchased. You can currently pick it up on Amazon for around 27 bucks. After using packaging tape to secure the suit in place, I use a permanent marker to trace around the edges of the cut pieces. Making this pattern was a little tricky in some areas. After years of use for the previous suit, the rubber had stretched and warped. This made it difficult for creating accurate measurements. Again, it was important for me to remember which pieces needed to be extended to include an overlap for gluing. The two main front facing pieces did not need an overlap since these were glued on top of the seams, preserving the dimensions. However, the two back pieces were glued underneath the front facing piece, so these will need an overlap on the right side of the pattern. In addition, the center of the back will also need an overlap. The suit I'll be making will be a front zip, so the zipper will take place of any overlap in the front. To make the measurements as accurate as possible, I used a triangle to measure an extra 3 eighths of an inch for the back pieces. I made a little dot every quarter of an inch, which I later connected with a tracing compass and a ruler. And after all that hard work, my pattern was officially done. I also cut the suit on a computer printer paper. Taping the edges together, I was able to find small errors in the pattern and make the corrections before applying it to the latex. With everything finalized, it was really easy transferring the pattern onto the latex. Those of you who frequent this channel know that I use a purple permanent marker since this shows up the best on black latex. Now, it's on to cutting out the pieces. This is really easy to do with the rotary cutter, and on average it took about 7 minutes to cut out each piece. The sheet latex I'm using is 0.5 millimeters thick, and the entire cat suit used about 4 yards. I purchased this from the website MJ Trends, which cost me about $62 US. Finally, it's time to glue everything together. I got this special rubber zipper glue from Euro Catsuits, which took over a month to ship to the US. But when I tried to use it, something was wrong. It turns out all the glue inside was completely dried out and useless. Thankfully, they were quick to refund my money. So, since the specialized zipper glue was a bust, it was time to resort to more old-fashioned methods. I coated the zipper fabric in two layers of latex glue and let it completely dry. This will make it much easier to stick to the latex. In preparation for gluing on the zipper, I cleaned the rubber with some paint thinner and taped both edges so they won't curl up when applying the glue. I then used the paintbrush to add the glue onto both the rubber and the zipper. I waited about 5 minutes for the glue to slightly dry on both pieces. I carefully began attaching the zipper onto the latex. I later found out that I screwed up a bit when putting on the zipper. 
I didn't leave any extra bits of zipper for the neck of the suit. So I guess at the moment, the suit isn't gonna have a neck. Although in the future, I may figure out how to fix this. It's very important not to apply any stretching or pulling on the rubber because the zipper is going to remain rigid and any stretching will put unnecessary stress on the glue. Getting to the crotch area of the suit, I needed to glue some of the latex together before I could finish attaching the zipper. With the inner thighs glued together, I could finish attaching the zipper for the butt of the suit. Like before, I apply the glue and carefully press the zipper into place. Finally, glue is applied to make the back seam, and like everything else, the glue is given 5 minutes to dry before the pieces are attached. To reinforce the zipper, I started gluing a reinforcement strip on the left side of the suit. However, I quickly ran into problems with this strip around the butt area where the rubber needs to be glued on a curve. To try and fix these problems, on the right side I reduced the width of the strip down to 1 inch. This made gluing considerably easier and it turned out much more professional looking. Because of this, I removed the strip on the left side, cleaned the glue off the suit, and replicated what I had done on the right. You can see this turned out much better, and I'm very pleased with the results. Next, I'm adding a patch to the end of the butt zipper near the tailbone. This helps both reinforce my previous seams and provides a firm end to the zipper. After, I finish up gluing together the inside of the legs. This was a bit tricky since the rubber curves inwards after the thighs. And you can see, here's the current progress of the suit. So far, it's looking good. I'm now focusing on the shoulders. This part is really easy to glue together. Although, I kind of regret gluing these together first, since this made attaching the arms a bit harder to accomplish later on. Now for the real progress, gluing the outer sides together. Surprisingly, this was probably the easiest thing to glue together out of everything so far. I just needed to ensure that the sides were lined up properly so I wouldn't get any ripples in the rubber when wearing it. I also added zippers off camera. These were a pain in the ass to get on. Lastly, it's time to glue on the arms. I decided to glue them on one side at a time and inside out. Right now, I'm attaching the back right side of the arm starting at the armpit. Now, I'm gluing the front right side. This time, I'm starting at the shoulder and moving back down to the armpit where I started. Next, a layer of glue is added to the length of the arm, where I carefully press the two ends together. Now, I basically repeat all these previous steps, but with the left side of the suit. 
We're almost finally done. After attaching the seams, I press them together with a rolling pin. I've done this with all the seams. And after three weekends of hard work, my cat suit is finally complete. I'm so happy with how this turned out. Well, it's been quite a fun adventure making my own full rubber cat suit. And to be honest, this turned out better than I was expecting. There were a few times while I was making this where I was afraid, like for example, cutting the patterns, that the pieces weren't gonna line up well, there was gonna be some open gaps. And thankfully, uh, my patterns were accurate enough where everything really fit into place well. And this turned out quite professional looking. I mean, it, it, you know, in some parts, like some of the seams, it looks like a home job. And I'm really a little pissed that I screwed up around here with forgetting about a neck with the suit and I should have extended the zipper up further so I could have included one. Um, but what I'm thinking later on is I'll still include a neck, but I'll have a button like a little snap for the front. So that's how I'll be able to put the neck on. But that's something for the future because I'm not quite sure yet how to put snaps on rubber. So I got to do a little research on that. Now, I really want to put this on right now. It's killing me. But the fact of the matter is, it's still drying. And for most things, giving it 24 hours is good enough. You can see, like, it's pretty strong. You know, that's not tearing. But uh, the whole curing process takes about a week. So I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and wait a full week for everything to completely dry before I put this on because, you know, I put all this work into this. I don't want to ruin it just by putting it on. So I will be back in a week with another video where I put this suit through the ropes. If you have any questions, if you want to try doing this yourself, I recommend it. It was a fun project and I was able to replace my aging STR cat suit which had several major rips that were developing in it. Some of the parts like uh, where the cod piece was where it had little snaps. Those were coming out and the rubber was just generally rotting around it. So, you know, this was a good way to save the pattern from it because the suit still fit me beautifully and I'm really excited to try this on and see how all my work has paid off. So like I said, that video is coming in a week and it'll be well worth the wait, I can guarantee it. Anyways, see y'all next week.